defeat without some tech issues. The gremlins are at work. I think it's kind of ironic that uh, you're having uh, tech issues in a sci-fi quiz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it goes. There. And that is the familiar background that I am aware of. Uh, okay, host, please let me give, let me share screen. Here's a weird part. That's not a virtual background. That's his actual background. Yeah, it is. Are you are you sitting on the second floor of Blossom Star? <laughs> <laughs> no. Just sitting at my own place, my own library. It's a little library. It just looks like that. Oh, that we go to the answers <laughs> Isn't that the best? That's how inclusion is. This is directly See, I always believed in being a what shall we say, generous quiz master, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Basically, the uh, audience or the participants should make uh, more points than the quiz master in the sense that, you know, uh, in terms of uh, what do you call Not exactly doing points, points uh, being awarded. So, in that sense, you get a point, you get a point, everybody gets a point. Sorry. Yes, there we go. So, everybody knows the rules, skills, everything has been explained or should we jump right in? I will. Tell us what to do next. So, uh, so, uh, I'll introduce the rules. Basically, rules. straightforward. Uh, everyone needs to send in the answers on chat. The chat will be visible only once the question starts. The chat will only be visible to the hosts, Shanoi and Arushi and Bertie and myself. We'll give you. We'll be keeping a tab of the score. So we have Aditya and Aman helping us. India wants to know. All you need to do is give us the answers on chat. Ten points for correct answer. No negative, so feel free to guess at every question. We'll also give you a shout out for the funniest answer, fun facts, and puns, of course. So yeah, over to you, Shanai. Yeah, right. So yeah, bring it on. Uh, just just guess away. There are no negatives. And uh, one thing about the, the quizzes are that just just look at the slide very carefully. Uh, half many a time there are lots of clues, if not the answers hidden there on the slide itself, right? Uh, at any point, if you have questions, clarifications, feel feel free to unmute and ask. Right. So, welcome. That's been done. Team number nine. That's the uh, uh, anyone wants to know team. Right. Thanks, guys, for giving me this opportunity. It felt good to set this quiz, and looking forward to it. Uh, rules. Uh, so I can just explain very simple. That's how it goes. I'll ask the question. You send the answer via chat. You unmute and give us the right answer. And then Bertie and Arushi shall uh, enlighten us with uh, their uh, fun facts and the banter, which I'm honestly looking forward to myself. Uh, yeah, we okay. Just keep the banter going. We like puns. We love puns, as you can see as you go through the quiz. Right. Yay to Bertie and Arushi. Thank you guys for <laughs> uh, joining. Right. Let's start. First question. Right. Very uh, a bit of a loser to get things uh, going. So the guy you see there inside is one guy called Hugo Gernsback. He also happened to be an inventor and that's one of his inventions. He was a businessman. Um, and uh, the name Hugo must be familiar to anyone who's read uh, science fiction. Uh, the Hugo Awards are named after this uh, gentleman and he's considered one of the fathers of uh, modern science fiction for his contribution to the genre, which includes founding this magazine called Amazing Stories, uh, which is the first magazine dedicated uh, exclusively to uh, sci-fi so very simple question what popular term did he coin that is still widely used even today I am just looking at the names on the cover man H.G. Wills, Jules Wall, Edgar Allan Poe wow correct you, you wouldn't 
yeah edgar allan poe like many people they're like hey, is he science fiction yes he's also written a lot of science fiction uh, is the chat open uh, answers haven't come in yet answers yet. are coming in specifically to me uh, right some ah. interesting I guesses so far i can't see any answers i think people are sending it only specifically uh, to me uh, to india wants to know you can actually just send it on uh, uh, public chat but uh, so far that in uh, interesting guesses are time travel robot world building someone uh, manav said trivia is the word that was coined here oh um, i have a good thing it says second guess spikela is uh, a hazmat suit just going by the picture <laughs> don't like i said don't overthink it's a very simple answer uh hello akila said going by the picture it's probably social distancing <laughs> oh, that would be very topical yeah, yeah. rohit has said it's flow state like he's looking at hugo writing there and saying flow state i i have one guess at the right answer i have the right answer just come on let me i don't know if the rest of you have been able to see it as well Suresh Vishnu says noise cancellation. I can't believe things of that. Okay, that image seems to have misled a lot of people. It was just there because it's a uh, probably one of the clearest <laughs> pictures of Hugo Boss's <laughs> work. So Suresh lives in Indra Nagar, so obviously he's thinking about that all the time. <laughs> That's got nothing to do with the picture. That's just where he is. <laughs> Suresh says Akhand Bharat is the word. Okay. Well, I, I, okay. That's already started. Good. <laughs> I'm just trying to draw the line between Akhand Bharat and Hugo Gansberg. Retro futurism uh, is another answer that came in. Uh, video conferencing says Vishnu. Um, yeah, these are all the guesses so far. We can go to the right answer actually. We can actually go to someone. You can actually someone who's gotten it right. If you can just raise your hand, we'll come to you. Now that we close pounds, yeah, we'll go to the answer. Uh, we'll just we'll, wait for a second. Someone can just raise your hand on Zoom. We'll yeah, them. Mehul at the right answer. That's one. That's Mehul. Mehul. Yeah, I'll just ask Mehul. Mehul, if you can hear. Mehul. Me. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so the answer is science fiction. Perfect. That's the correct answer. That's the correct answer. You knew this, or you just guessed? No, no, I knew this. Right. Uh, okay. Then a supplementary question to you: What is okay. the term that Hugo Gernsback actually preferred? Mm. I'll give it to you. So science fiction, it is. The answer okay. is science fiction. So sci-fi will also get you uh, points. Well done, Mayhul. So this is one of the two terms for this genre that uh, Hugo Gernsback coined, though he personally preferred the term science fiction. And that's Hugo Gunn's okay. book again. That's pretty cool, scientific and fiction. So it's a nice portmanteau. Yeah. Nice portmanteau, scientific fiction, scientific fiction. He liked to use it, but uh, somehow it didn't find favor. Uh, and uh, until then, the book works of uh, Jules Verne and H.G. Wells were all called scientific romances. What the? Yeah, they are called scientific. Start writing scientific romances again. Yes. No, no, no. You you try writing scientific romance, people will still call it sci-fi. One <laughs> <laughs> of the wrong answers for robot. Uh, so so fun fact about robot is that it comes. It's one of those very rare words where the etymology comes from a play, it's not from a book or it's not from a different language or something. It's by Carol Capek. Carol Capek. Carol Capek. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it was a very interesting from a play. uh we don't get to other than shakespeare we don't get to many words from plays so that is one of the modern etymologies from a play robot robot yes and uh, it was his brother joseph capek actually who uh, so when carl carl capek was writing the play uh, he was looking for a word uh, and it was his brother who suggested it you know i think it has a polish etymology which means sort of uh, you know uh, labor or something forced labor or something like that scientific chat chalo right let's move to the next question again a very simple one this the trekkies should get this uh um uh, quickly uh 
the cake i will be tk says please send your answers to aditya sajeev right uh look at the star trek memes and name the 2012 sci-fi novel that won both the hugo and the locus award for best science fiction novel in 2013 so you see captain kirk with a bunch of people right and it says the real suicide squad right there and then below is probably my favorite of this set which said if george rr R. martin wrote for star trek right so you can see the key change that has been done uh, to the characters in that meme and if you put together what george martin rr martin is supposed to do best then you'll get your <laughs> I think while we get the answers, can I share a really random fact <laughs> or random something really random? Yes, please. So, so when I had uh, so when I was uh, when I was sharing about the quiz on my Instagram, I had actually put a Star Trek pun and I said, uh, "Ye quiz card ke to dekho." <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh. So yeah, just that. Card ke to dekho. Card ke to dekho. I, By the way, Sai, if people are sending the answers to Aditya, then we don't have any of the wrong answers to figure out what to write. Yes. I'm going to read out the answers. Yeah. Um, yeah. So far, Harman Singh and Soyash have gotten it right. Uh, Rohit yeah, Singh gave an interesting answer saying three body problem. <laughs> okay. That sounds like a physical problem. Okay. Hmm. Three body problem. That's a modern classic right there, but uh, not the right answer. Anyway. Like, like Shanoi said, the answers are quite evident. It's there. Yeah, it's like screen. literally yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's one thing you'll realize when you see the answer that it was actually there in the question slide. In in one form or the other, or am I giving away too much? No. Yeah, I've given away whatever has to be given away. So, <laughs> just the points remain to be given away now. Yeah. Let's go to Soyash who answered it. One second. So, so the answer is uh, red shirt, and the idea is that in Star Trek, uh, people, the red shirts always die. Uh, and you know, there's that very funny, uh, I don't know if you've seen that very, very funny meme where, uh, there's a stormtrooper shooting. It doesn't hit the red shirt, but the red shirt still dies because red shirts always die. And uh, one of the interesting things that happened was that after the original series in the next generation, they also changed the colors in terms of like previously red used to be for engineering and, uh, um, the master brown used to be for, uh, co uh, command, but they switched that in the uh, in the next generation series onwards but uh, still they continued the trend of the red shirts dying <laughs> yes, <laughs> command <or dying. laughs> fantastic this thing so basically you know if you find if you if you're handed a red shirt at the uh, academy at the starfleet wardrobe that's it you're an expendable that's it, you're <laughs> Yeah, and that, that, that meme is brilliant, uh, the one which Swish mentioned. The, start, the stormtroopers are not supposed to hit anything, right? So, what happens, you know, it's like an immovable force and uh, unstoppable uh, object, right? The stormtrooper will fire and miss, but the red shirt will die anyway. <laughs> right, so full points to Swish. Swish and Harman got it right on the previous one. Yeah, points to Harman as well. Well done. Let's move well done, on. Well done. Yeah, on to the next question. So let's yeah. just stay here and watch him prance around, right? <laughs> right. Very simple. I think this is an XKCD uh, cartoon, uh, which basically shows uh, movie character intera uh, interactions uh, between you know the interactions between the characters in a in in that particular film the horizontal axis is time the vertical grouping indicates which characters are today at any given time so you see lord of the rings you know 
the fellowship usually is together then they get sort of uh, separated and then they come together again etc 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 star wars original trilogy you can see the various characters uh, coming again right uh, co-host directly to shannon yeah. need to send in answers on chat Sorry. please okay joyce joy has sent uh, a dm to me and uh, joy gets it right uh my favorite of all this is 12 angry men it's oh, it's it's yeah. nice it's nice it's clean Looks anybody so yeah it, it's it's nice and clean right uh, so who's i identify this film i mean uh, by way of a clue i would say that this is a prime example of a low budget high concept film one of the best time travel films that i have seen also very interesting it was a debut of the director this was yes. his first film this is fantastic yeah for someone who whose debut film it was the way it was handled the finesse given the budget the finesse with which it was done was absolutely brilliant and you can see that there are uh, very few characters who interact with each other uh, a lot ah <laughs> uh, right see if you get a if you see if you get a high definition poster of this lord of the rings one It'll be a really nice poster. <laughs> That, yeah, it will. I, but I've not been able to find a better resolution than than this one. We'll have to like figure a way out. Just write, no, 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 write no. to Randall Munro or something. <laughs> Mail Randall. <laughs> yeah, Mail Randall and say, please, can you send us this? Okay, Akila says, "Ham saath saath hain," uh, which is not a time travel film. <laughs> you travel in time when you watch it, bro. <laughs> Correct. This could be Jani Dushman also. Honestly, I mean. just look at it it's all oh yeah correct yeah i mean you you, you can say um, what shall we say uh, reincarnation and all that is a, some form of time travel somebody should somebody should write a novel on that there you go right manav says manav says desh drohi okay we're getting like really <laughs> good to go <laughs> krk would be proud of that uh, guess uh right then was darshini raghavan back to the future okay this okay darshini raghavan is back to the future which is a good time travel film but not the one that we are looking for there again the character interactions are pretty straight forward okay suresh has gone down the path of uh, reincarnation and says om shanti om Nice to see Ashwita. Huh? I'm going to Ashwita and asking for a guest directly. Pounds looks like it's closed. Oh, Pounds is closed? No. Shall we close Pounds after five seconds? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Why not? You decide to. Cool. I'm going to Ashwita. If you can unmute yourself or Chirantan, we're just going to randomly pick people to give your answers. Hi. Hey. Any guesses? So I answer predestination because it was a time travel movie. Not sure if that's the right answer. That's not the right answer. Even Adarsh um, messaged uh, predestination. That's unfortunately not the right answer. Even though it's a good, uh, uh, what shall I say, causal loop film. It's a brilliant film. Supplementary question to you: Which story is it based on? For no points. uh predestination yeah yeah what is it based on i think she's saying predestination oh no 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 it's it's a story called all you zombies oh yes all you zombies by heinlein so if you watch uh the film predestination uh ethan hawk actually says uh that sentence he said i know where i come from but where do all you zombies come from so that that's a nod to the uh, source uh, story that it was based on right hari bhai definitely going to watch that again today then <laughs> you chai time for a rewatch yes time for a rewatch harman do you have a guess uh, so i know this one um like is it okay if we go for the correct answer please go ahead okay cool so this is uh, this is primer this is the clumsiest most complicated most 
odd to watch movie ever i tried watching this in college and then i tried again and then i tried again i'm still doing it it's not working um so yeah that's it's fine correct yeah, yeah primer is the right answer i had a couple of friends who tried to do one chart like this uh, uh over a course of some three watches and then then tore up that kg cardboard and threw it and they just gave up so this is indeed primer primer like but you're saying it was shane karut's debut and made on a absolute shoestring uh, budget absolute shoestring budget but yeah you you're, you're saying something about uh, the scientists collaborating or something on this yeah so what had happened was uh, to make sure that he's got all of the funda the facts right uh, he actually employed people who were working on the physics of time travel who were experts and actual researchers so that he will get all the terms right and then he could get the science behind it right so what happened was a screenplay eventually that was written for the actually has its sources and co-writers as researchers and quantum physicists which is pretty cool absolutely cool well, i'm um this is not something that anybody would do after a long time definitely even though it was a debut movie he went all, all out um I, if you haven't seen this movie uh, you should but not once watch it couple, i mean if you've seen tenet three times you have not understood what it is then this is a movie you have to watch at least 10 times i, I okay I, i think you're just you know making people put out a huge chunks of their lives to sit and watch <laughs> it's like monday 8 o'clock watch primer tuesday 8 o'clock watch primer wednesday 8 o'clock watch primer you are stuck in a time loop yourself like did i see it yesterday or day yesterday right asim uh khan on youtube says the budget of prima was only $7000 back in 2004 which is absolutely stunning uh like i said the finesse of it was it was just sort of very mind blowing move on to the next question right the game very simple question just to take a look at this popular line of nicely inconspicuous scars from the uk over the years so it's the same uh uh model but in its various avatars and changes and designs over the years one of them belongs to uh this gentleman called uh, amita bachan who many of you may have heard of uh so it forms a uh, you know takes a place of pride in his uh, collection became big news when he got one and uh, people wondered if he knew the sci-fi connection maybe he did uh anyway identify the book or the trilogy either will get you full points either will get you full points yeah or the trilogy so if just just watch the screen see berty do his air quotes and then yeah great so basically all the answers are on screen or clues are on screen or we'll give it away by doing stuff like this <laughs> Sometimes I like doing this randomly throws people off. Completely <laughs> throws people off. Or just say something equally more random and say pun not intended and watch <laughs> and watch them scratch their heads. <laughs> so what are the answers coming in? Pretty sure some Amitabh Bachchan movie. Pa right i haven't got any I've, answers yet yeah. i've been I've as asan the bandaka asan the bandaka and someone is saying fast and furious tokyo drift okay if you're a fast and furious fan just wait for the next question <laughs> <laughs> Anta, are you getting any interesting guesses? Uh, there's Fast and the Furious, there's Stars and the Wonder Car, there's the both parts of the thing uh, of the question. Fabian Matthews got in it right. If it's a Fabian, my, that I know. The, the person who said Fast and Furious. The fact that you mentioned Fast and Furious just like eight films, but we asked that it's a trilogy. You're actually very close to the answer. In Correct. a very weird way. <laughs> In a very weird way, absolutely. 
Well, it. Shed is a trilogy, but you told us a movie that's got like eight parts. I'm, I'm going to be so disappointed if they don't name the 10th uh, Fast and Furious mil, uh, film your seatbelt. Because then it'll be Fast 10 your seatbelt. Seat belt. I like Fast 10, Fast 10 like that. <laughs> Yeah, fast in your seat belts. <laughs> Kehari Balaji says cars. No, cars is not a trilogy with or without the apostrophe. For, for, Can I give you all these things now? Is it time? Like <laughs> it is time, yeah. For all those automobile fanatics out there. The problem is this car, which is an old thing, has only four gears. And in Fast and Furious, you know the number of gears they go through? It's like every, every scene they have like six, seven, eight, nine, ten gears they go through. Correct, but it's the handbrake they use most often. <laughs> Ironically. <laughs> <laughs> Something that goes that furious, yeah. Okay. Let's go to... Actually, let's go to... Wait, is Nitin the Goyal minute. there? I would like... Yeah, Nitin, can you hear us? I hope he. Hey guys, hey Bodhi. Hey. Yeah. Tell us you answer. have to tell us the answer now. Well, the book is probably the it is the greatest book in the galaxy. It is a trilogy of five, and mm -hmm. the nicely inconspicuous name of this particular brand of cars launched by Ford back in the day, Ford Prefect was taken by a fruit who came from Beetle Shoes and decided to maze himself in the and he thought cars were the dominant life form. So why not Ford Prefect? So yeah, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Thanks for including okay, this first question. Of all, Nithin, I am sure it's some tech issue. Your voice is coming through like Marvin the Ant, right? <laughs> <laughs> or else you're doing a very good impression. <laughs> Is it better now? I don't have my earphones on me, so it's ah, like, it oh, came in <laughs> much better. But yeah, perfect. But but the answer was perfect and it was explained very 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 well. So that's the correct answer. The answer is uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The car is of course the Ford Prefect, which uh, uh, as Nitin said, he took the name of most dominant is the life form, which uh, Ford Prefect thought was cars. Uh, right. Okay, this is this is very weird because this is a book which is the 42nd anniversary edition of Hitchhiker's Guide, which I am halfway through on my 11th read, and it was given to me by the person who answered the question right now, Nitin Goyal. So, thanks, Nitin. <laughs> very, yeah. very things in the world, you know, is conspiring to come together. To do you're welcome, mate. I hope you have your towel at hand. <laughs> Every Always know where your towel is. See, always know where your is. Bird is a good fruit. <laughs> Buddy, like I said, I, I know where you live. Let me know when you're going out of town. I shall pay a visit. <laughs> and I'm not in town. <laughs> right. I mean, seriously, is there anyone here who's not a H2 YouTube fan? There should be an Akila PR. <laughs> Let's see what she says. Correct. But she, she is saying that Ford's prefect's best friend is Arthur Dent, which is funny because car and dent. Nice. Okay, you, uh, even even I have not observed. That's a good. No, that's because she's in Bangalore. Car and dead go together. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, unlike in Delhi, where they send you from the showroom pre-dented so that you don't have to worry about your first dent. <laughs> oh, okay. Sandeep. By the way, sorry. Since uh, I am not not a fan, right? But I think the thing I did is I didn't read the books at all. I have only ever read the radio play version, the, the original radio plays. I've only ever read that. And I think if you guys are fans of the books, you should definitely read the radio play version because it is amazing. But I have never actually read the book and I have watched only half the movie. But on a very interesting side note, if anybody has Hotstar, I would ask all of you to, whenever it comes out, watch the Hitchhiker's Guide Hindi version. Because my aunt, who has never read a sci-fi book in her life, was asked to do the translation of the subtitles and the audio for the for the movie. And she is now like a Hitchhiker's Guide fan. She went to, she did all the research, she found out all the things, she did all the sci-fi tropes. And she is now like 
definitely not Shenoy level, but she can attend a Shenoy quiz and get maybe like three or four questions right. Damn. Oh wow. Okay, I am going to watch this tonight. Uh-huh. I am. I going don't know to- if it's out yet, but I will check and let you know whenever the the her, her version of the subtitles are out. Like she and her group translated uh, the subtitles for Hot Star. Okay, I, I I mean thanks for that. This is fabulous. I mean I wish you could give you points for telling us that, but <laughs> I seriously so wish. But uh, next time on coffee on me. Don't now we all, now we all know. Really going to yeah, I completely agree. She totally deserves points, but I leave that to the team at India wants to know. Right, India wants to know <laughs> if Anna gets points. I'll give her coffee. It's okay. Coffee yeah, coffee ka- <laughs> coffee. Coffee, coffee, hai. Coffee, coffee. <laughs> I'm sorry, just comes out. Okay, next question. Right. Very simple. One word connects all of them. Uh, in the case of this uh, Yogi Adityanath lookalike, it's the person's name that connects and not the character. Uh, in the case of this person, it's the character that connects and not the actor. In the case of this lady, it's what she's wearing that connects to the answer. So, what one word connects all of these? Uh, does everyone want a clue? Just unmute and say yes. Yes, please. Okay. The, the clue is that it's a four-letter word. <laughs> I know it's not that four letter word, but it's a four letter. <laughs> Come on, life and love are both four letter words. Che, if only I was some tech bro who tweeted it out, no, I'd be getting Hajar RT. Let's, let's do one thing. Let's make it interesting. Uh, we're going to open the chat. People can just ship answers or guesses on public chat. Let's see what are the interesting guesses people have. Okay. Four letter words. Four letter words. By the way, being an LOTR fan, I know exactly what he's going to say after that particular GIF. Legolas intensifies. They're taking the hobbits to Isengard. There you go. That's the GIF I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> now that's smoldering, you know? <laughs> Okay, Suresh Vishnu says Meta. Akela says if the answer slide doesn't have the they're taking the Hobbits to Isengard remix version, I'll be very sad. Uh, that, okay, I, that's another <laughs> coffee. That's another, another, that's another coffee. Take it. That's fuel, fuel is not right. Just give me one second, guys. Yeah. Thank you for missing guesses like you. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Okay. I think, did, did he say like that this word is um, where it comes to the answer? No, he hasn't said that. Okay. Right? Shall, okay. Should, okay. Should, should we wipe all the guesses clean and yeah, give another ahead. clue? Yeah. Okay. Let's, okay. Let's wipe all the guesses clean. Right. Uh, I'll give you another clue. The clue is that this word forms the suffix to yes. all these the answer forms a suffix to all these so s- somebody did say retro futurism etc the other time so you could take that also as a clue one of the clues so it's a four letter word. E- so each word is a, is a clue to a word and each all those words can yeah. be attached to yeah, one does, word. yeah. yeah. What the easiest one is the first one. Yeah, the easiest one is the first one. That's what I didn't understand at all, by the way, the first one. Yeah. So one, once you get that, then you get everything else. So basically, this four-letter word which connects all of these forms a prefix, Ooh. which is the second half of all of these. I'll give you another clue, some slightly tangential clue. Another clue will be a gif of the same kind of gif that you see of Legolas of Clint Eastwood. Intensifying a stack. That's a GIF that should help you. Tangentially. Hmm. Ah, uh-huh. Clint Eastwood. Is that Clint Eastwood. Yeah. When he's doing the same stack that Legolas does. Yeah. 
Shall we close phones and Divakar has raised his hand? I think my my clue helped. <laughs> yeah, Divakar, if you can hear us, I was asking on mute. Yeah. Sorry, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yeah, so uh, the word is punk. Like yes. steampunk, cyberpunk, and I think the uh, gif that Ashley is referring to is, uh, I think, go ahead, punk. That. Uh, Do you uh, feel you're lucky, punk? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that one, yeah. Well done. Good well done. done. You got it from that. Well done. Well done. Uh, Sandeep also. Uh, Sandeep also gets uh, uh, the answer, right? Uh, Sandeep, do you want to unmute and take us through the many punks? Uh, it was a short and dull talk. You said steam is the first one. Uh, uh, <laughs> steam punk, four letter. I went with that. And Legolas, I feel, is the punk of LODR. I don't like oh, it. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, take, take, take brownie points for that. Take brownie <laughs> points for that. Right? So, okay, I'll tell you. So, that's steampunk. That's rice punk, right? Uh, if you've uh, heard about this Sri Lankan uh, sci-fi writer called Yudhanjaya Vijayaratne, absolutely exciting, fresh new voice in global SF. He's written books like uh, Number Cast, which is an alternate uh, history of uh, Sri Lanka with AI and all of those things. Uh, he's written Number Cast and everything. His name is he's actually written a rice punk manifesto about how science fiction from our part of the world differs from global science fiction, etc. Uh, this is diesel punk. Diesel. Yeah, diesel punk. This is elf punk. Uh, this building, this style of architecture is known as art deco. So it's deco punk. Uh, this is solar punk, which is a new genre where all the science fiction stories are about sustainable futures and all of that. And this is silk punk. Not sari punk, it's silk punk. It's silk punk. You heard about this uh, uh, author called Ken Liu. Ken Liu who wrote uh, uh, The Paper Menagerie. I mean, The Paper Menagerie was the first one to win a fantasy, world fantasy award, a Locus award, a Hugo award, uh, and one more, like four awards and one short story. Uh, and, and there's no science in it at all. Right, it was called uh, Paper Manager. So he has a series of novels which he calls Silk Punk. So if you look up, and these are all basically what he, what we call cyberpunk derivatives. So it, cyberpunk was the original punk daddy of them all. After that, all of them started. Right. So full points to uh, Sandeep and uh, who else answered? No, what is distracting? What the, you should have put Silk Smith in a sari. That would have been a meta clue. C correct, but uh, didn't find Silk Smith wearing <laughs> silk, <laughs> silk, <laughs> silk sari. Uh, no, right. I, then, I understand the problem here. Correct. And we are supposed to be a family quiz, right? So, and then suddenly it will be like, okay, what is a Smitha punk and all those things will happen. <laughs> right? So, it might just be one. You never know. There's like a punk on everything. Correct. I mean, I, honestly, I mean, if uh, I mean the term uh, Smita Punk is up for grabs, right? I thought the rice punk was actually steampunk initially when I seen that. So, oh, rice is steamed. So yeah, uh, steamed rice punk. No, no, it's, it's just rice. is very. Yeah, clean. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just. What would, you, what would you call if Sai Ganesh starts writing punk? I know. I know. Cyberpunk. Like cyber cyberpunk. <laughs> And if he doesn't talk, everybody he's loves cyberpunk. cyberpunk. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I already. If he doesn't talk, if he doesn't talk, he'll be shy cyberpunk. Oh, nice. Hey, oh, you wow. what? Sai, you and I should do do a partnership. Sai Bur from Bertie, from oh. Sai Ganesh and Bertie, cyberpunk. Done. Let's write a book. We hope all of you are enjoying these puns as much as we are. <laughs> we could go on. Silence is taken as that. Yeah. <laughs> Please should I? <laughs> okay. Fun. Fun fact. There's also Khyber Punk. Uh, so actual thing? Yeah, it, it I mean, like I said, it, it's become such as this thing that it, it's become a joke. So when Ian McDonald, who wrote River of Gods, uh, it's a book which is set in 2047 on the 100th uh, anniversary of Indian independence. It's got like all kinds of AIs, Blade Runner style cops and also it's actually post cyberpunk. Uh, so when uh, they asked him, OK, what what genre he said, 
science fiction but no what what genre so he said okay it's cyberpunk take it and go right enough of the punks let's move on to the next question please akila do not take points away from us panelists we have so few to so few left no no you are the host panelist is me <laughs> right so an excerpt from a story uh from alistair reynolds galactic north uh so it's basically about two people mirsky and iravel mirsky is of course dead when this uh, passage happens but iravel remembers what uh, mirsky had uh, told her that basically keep the body aboard keep it in a casket uh about the spaceship uh until we're almost touching light and then fire me ahead that is my body in the casket ahead of the ship so iravel asks is that really what you want so mirsky says it's an old tradition dash 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 right the blanks are indicative i even put the number of letters uh in uh, in the three banks so filling in the blank will give you one of the best puns in the history of science fiction so is really pun punk which full of puns correct it's it's, it's pun but it's not punk it's not punk it's punk yeah <laughs> right any answers uh, interesting answers coming in i i can give a clue a knowledge of physics will help you but this is knowledge which everybody knows thanks to one person yeah yeah i mean I, everybody yeah like you said physics and that knowledge has stayed constant for a long time now thank you thank you thank you right so what's this old pirate tradition right any interesting answers aditya any interesting answers uh, got a couple of right answers oh nice um, yeah who answered first Mirsky answered first. Uh, just a minute. First was Akila. Okay. And, oh, and second. Let's go, Akila. Hey, one second. Oh, hi. Hi. Sorry. Should I answer? Yes, please. Okay. So just going by the. Where he thinks, I think it's buried at sea, and I, if that's, I I love it if that is a thing. Right. Any other guesses? Right. We'll go to the answer then. This is indeed burial at sea. It's not buried at sea, but we'll give you points. It's burial at sea. Uh, sea being the speed of light. Uh, so it's an old pirate tradition. for the body to be buried at sea right so full points to everyone who got this i wish you could give extra points for cracking the pun right so we'll oh we're at 450 already cool so we'll okay uh this is there for fun fact uh, uh rogers analysis lot of right i quickly tell you about it's it's the other greatest pun in the history of uh, science fiction so it, it's ba- it, the covers are like this because it's based on indian mythology and indian gods and all of that uh, so basically rogers elizney creates this uh, character called the shan uh, right the shan uh, and the hero is riding with the shan and there's a long build up and all and then suddenly this the shan gets uh, epileptic seizures and then comes the immortal line and then the fit hit the shan so please read this book for that pun <laughs> right next question <laughs> right a promo poster for a recent series or rather a recent season of a slightly oldish series uh which matches up the series with the poster of a classic anime which is considered one of the most influential sci-fi films of all time uh name both for full point so 
which are the two series that are being uh, mashed up here you can sort of see part of the answer if you look closely I've not tried to uh, obscure it at all yes everybody gets points here so five points for the new series five points for the classic anime film can I give a hint? Can I give a hint? Yes, please. That hint? That hint? That hint, that hint. <laughs> that hint? Yes, please. Yes, yes, please. So the hint is Sonakshi Sina. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, but Sonakshi Sina will not get you points. Yeah, but yeah, that's, I mean, it's kind of related, but also not like. Uh... Yeah, it, it's a brilliant clue. Sonakshi Sina is a brilliant, brilliant clue. You'll get a five points at least. I can only imagine what typing Sonakshi Sinha sci-fi will throw up. I oh my god, no. <laughs> you should like switch on safe search or something. I know, I I, I, know, I know, I know. Fan fiction. <laughs> yeah. Fan I want a fan fiction. No, no, fan no, science fiction. Not, no, no, then it won't be science fiction again, more fantasy in the realm of fantasy and all of that. I love story twenty something. I don't know what twenty two hundred are. Somebody's raised their hand. Hari Balaji has raised their hand. Which, which, which was a film with uh, Priyanka Chopra? Love Story 2040. 2050. 2050 or 2046? 2050. Yeah. It has to be a round number, no? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, well, so Harman, 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 the anime is uh, Akira and uh, the other uh, series is Rick and Morty. That's that's the full point. So Rohit, your guess of Shakira's ships don't lie. It's it's a brilliant <laughs> one though. Ships don't lie. Ships don't lie. <laughs> so, somebody should write one short story like that. I mean, given the fact that AI sentient spaceships and all are like big, been big for a while and getting bigger. Somebody should have one ships don't lie story. So, brownie points to you, Rohit, for ships don't lie, but the correct and, answer. And, and if it's for like physicists, it should be like kips don't lie. <laughs> Ayo! Come on! Ayo! Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's exactly I'm what I'm putting was. myself on mute. <laughs> what, what did John Abraham tell Bipasha Basu? Bips don't lie. <laughs> So, <laughs> anyway, so it's it's Rick and Morty. So two points for Rick and Morty. Uh, sorry, five points for Rick and Morty and five points for uh, Akira. Well done, guys. If you haven't seen Akira, please do. It's like absolutely mind blowing. What the Sonakshi? The Sonakshi. <laughs> there is a Sonakshi Sinha film also called uh, Akira, right? That's Was not a tribute to. Akira that's not Akira that I want you to watch. Yeah, <laughs> that. <laughs> Right. So the fun fact was that uh, when uh, Tokyo got the uh, 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 won the bid for Olympics, they said, you know, Akira predicted this back in the 80s by saying that uh, the Olympics are coming to Tokyo. Of course, they missed it by one year. So during the pandemic uh, and in, in the anime, this says get it cancelled because of whatever happens in the anime, you'll figure it out. So when the pandemic hit and Tokyo wasn't cancelling, the same thing started appearing in graffiti on Tokyo wall saying, you know, Akira was right, get it cancelled. Right, let's move on to the next question. Right, Keanu able to connect these two for full points. Right, so this of course is uh, our three panels from uh, Swamp Thing uh, during the Alan Moore run. So Alan Moore had a run on the swamp thing so these three panels are from that time uh and this of course is one of the many dunes so but the connection is to this dune in specific uh not the new dune not the famous unmade dune so Kanye West's favorite movie, right? Okay. 
I want to know how. Once this is done, Mehul, you have to tell no, me. I think that's Mehul's answer for the previous one. Previous question. Previous question is ah okay. Any interesting guesses, Aditya, so far? Others? <laughs> There's a big clue right there in the question itself. So. Pounds closed in five seconds. After that, we'll go to the people who have raised hands. Raja Shri Charan has raised his hand. Yeah, Raja, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, okay, so should I give the answer? Yes, please. Uh, I I think the answer is Ting. Uh, so uh, that's uh, John Constantine uh, from uh, Hellraiser and all that. But uh, he was based on. Uh, uh sting and i think sting uh, played a role in the 84 uh, version of doom okay, let's get ready for the gif correct correct that's the right answer and rajeshri that's your reward <laughs> okay okay please move on to the next slide <laughs> that, that's the reward you get points and you get to see this oh, sting intensifies every breath you take i'll be watching this <laughs> 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 so basically, Sting played the role of uh, Faith Rauta, the Baron Harkonnen's uh, uh, nephew in uh, uh, David Lynch's Dune, and that's him. And the character of Constantine, who first made his appearance in Swamp Thing, uh, was created uh, keeping Sting in mind. Right? Okay. Quick question to people out there: Who did the soundtrack for the Lynch David Lynch Dune? It is not Sting. He was there in the movie, but it was not. Um, it's a brilliant, brilliant band who I always keep talking about all the time, but nobody seems to understand how great they were. But was Dune set in Africa? Oh, oh, oh! Deep cut. Deep, wow. deep cut. <laughs> okay, fine. Take it, points. I don't know who said that. I can't recognize. Yes, whoever said Toto, take points and go and listen to Toto. Yes. The soundtrack was by the brilliant band Toto, who's known only for that one song. Although all the other songs are amazing. Okay, rant over. Let's go. So, I mean, do we move on, to, or do people still want to sit and enjoy this GIF? <laughs> I feel stung. My eyes are stung. Uh, Arish is just like looking at it, like. I'm not, yeah, it's so. I think it's oddly. <laughs> you, the more you see it, the more you want to see it. I don't know. That's is the power of state. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Uh, like Akila said, more float like a butterfly, be like a sting. <laughs> right? So, yeah, as much as you would like. I'll, I'll send you this gif. You can like probably... Right? Anyway. Only one person got this answer right, by the way. I think a huge shout out to... Oh, wow. Okay. Sorry if it was a little difficult. But then, uh, it's easy if you know the answer types. <laughs> it's one of those. Uh, right? Great. Let's move on to the next question. We are... Almost at five, so right. You see three writers here. Uh, only one of who wrote science fiction, also amongst other things. Where would you see them together? Right. Uh, so this is one instance where these three are seen together. That I want the answer to. That's that's the clue. These statues are a clue. You may have seen them if you've seen what we are referring to but just it's quite easy to guess at least two of these for sure if not all three because they are absolute legends in the genre that they write in the clue okay i'll give you one more clue so this gentleman that you see here is the one amongst the three who also wrote science fiction but all three of them come together in another work of science fiction that we've all, I think, enjoyed. Highly influential, made tons of money. By the way, there is a, there's, there is, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's easy. I mean, I, we can check. The guy on the extreme left was the first person to use the word dinosaur in a story. He was also the 
uh, originator of what we call or rather really popular the the lost world genre of, of 1912 yeah, yeah of, so of, of science fiction that, that's where he used the word dinosaur 1912 so i mean that is science fiction and he was one of the first to do it but we know from we know better from a different genre but yeah right and just like to explain, just work out or try and work out this answer we can do it together as a group as well okay if no one's going i'll give another very very big clue very philip k dick it doesn't the clue doesn't get bigger than this no people are asking that so for the answers are sherlock holmes and jules verne league of extraordinary gentlemen i think they're making connection of Okay. Okay. Yeah, after, this, after this clue, you can guess again. We'll still get, give you points. After this Philip K. Dick clue, anyone wants to take a guess? Right. We'll close guesses in five, four, three, two, one. Uh, Say. Yeah. I'll go to Divakar. He's raised his hand. Raised his hand. Yeah. Uh, this is Minority Report. They are the. You guys can hear me. Yes. Yes. We can go ahead. Can you name uh, all three? Sorry, yeah, they are the, uh, the 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 council, the the figureheads of the council, or something like that. You know, the uh, for the pre-crime division. I'm not sure, but I remember seeing the that particular of the three of them standing together at one in the movie. Okay, Mehul has also raised his hand. Mehul. Yeah. So basically, the name of the three peacocks were Agatha, or Arthur, and Dash. Correct. That's that's the full answer. But if you, yeah, that's the answer. if you have minority report, you'll still get points. So basically, the three precogs were called uh, Arthur, Agatha, and Dash Dashil. After Arthur Conan Doyle, Agatha Christie, and Dashil Ahmed, you know, crime writers writing about mysteries and murder and all of that. And because the precogs predicted crime, this was a tribute to the three great writers of crime. that we know of so minority report will get you full points all right let's move on to the next question say we are at 5 how do you want to do this we can go up to 15 and whatever questions we can run through yeah yeah okay right so this is a strip from uh uh hawk a vagrant you see two people there so one person is uh writing a letter to another one saying can you put more balloons in your stories i think we should be friends so also i drew a picture of us write me back love something so that's the picture this bearded guy is drawn of the two of them obviously a stan which is the song to which the strip plays tribute to as well i think we should be friends so i wonder if emily has seen this i'm sure he has yeah because in real life too the bearded gentleman was a big fan of the non bearded gentleman you got a joy after this Yeah, Joy can hear us. Yeah, uh, it's Edgar Allan Poe and H. P. Lovecraft. Ah, uh, that does look like Edgar Allan Poe. Okay. Yes, it is Edgar Allan Poe, but the second bit, it's not H. P. H. P. Lovecraft didn't have a beard, and he was always morose, yeah, yeah. right. longish face, and I don't think there's ever a picture or even a. cartoon or illustration of him even with half a smile so edgar allan poe is right uh, <coughs> I, i think mehul raised his hand next mehul you want to take a crack uh, jo uh, jules verne right that's that's the full answer so that's jules verne and edgar allan poe and the, but here's the interesting bit in around the world in 80 days they don't actually take a balloon he mentions it but uh, philosopher doesn't take it in the original 
And how do they travel? They don't. They go check the Mongo flyers, and then he decides, no, we will not take the balloon in the original version. Only in the redone, uh, I think, version, they do take a balloon. I oh. read it. Yeah. And then it became famous because it, in the movies, they keep showing them going around the balloon. But in the original, they don't take a balloon. Mm. In all his other books, in all his other books, there are balloons. The one that you know from, that one doesn't have. <laughs> it's been at least, I think, I know, 25 years or 30 years since I last read around the world and all those classics. I think it's time to revisit those classics once. You know, read them as properly as adults. I know this because Michael Palin, he talks about it in Around the World in 80 Days, a series. Uh, uh, in doing the series, he says, I read the original and they don't take a balloon. And so I went back and saw, yeah. Right. So let's, so that's the second thing. Let's move on to the next question. Right. Very, very simple equation. You should read what's given at the bottom of the book. This person plus this person is equal to what? Like I say, it's, it's not an expansive answer. You, uh, and just in case you can't read this, uh, what the blurb on this book they've got in front of them says, it says interplanetary adventure the way it is ought to be written. So even if we've not read it, we may have seen it and then you will have to work your way backwards. Uh, ignore what is on this t-shirt it's not a clue it's not a good t-shirt it's a very good t-shirt it's a very nice t-shirt but that's not a clue does everyone want another clue does everyone want a clue uh, yeah. yeah yes okay um so when the show came out uh it was in the news because of Kittur Rani Channamma, who, if you know, was a, a queen and a freedom fighter from Karnataka, from this place called Kittur. So Kittur Rani Channamma was trending for a while because she appeared in, she appeared in this show, which is obviously based on the book. And now we can work backwards. Joy is raised hand again. We'll go to Joy. Uh, yeah, it's James A.C. Corey for Expanse. Yes, uh, and uh, that's that's the that's the solution. That's the answer. So, what are the constituents of James A.C. Corey? Absolutely, don't remember. Extremely <laughs> forgettable names. Take a guess. <laughs> Take a guess. Take a guess. No clue, man. No clue. No clue. Okay. Hey, Suesh has raised hand. Suesh, yes. I remember one, it's Ty Frank. It's Ty Frank, okay. I don't remember the other guy's name. Okay. The other guy is a, a a fantasy writer. The other guy is a fantasy writer. I'll give out the answer. So, Ty Frank and Daniel Abraham, uh, who write as James S. Corey, they write the uh, Expand series of uh, um, sci fi novels, starting with Leviathan Wakes, on which the Amazon series The Expanse is based. So, James S. Ecori is actually the pen name of these two people. So, it's actually co-authored. So, lots of people think James S. Ecori is one person. So, it's two people writing as James S. Ecori. Can I share an uh, interesting fact about this? Yes, please. Yeah. So, I think, uh, I mean, uh, I found it interesting rather that uh, it was originally a series on sci-fi, right? The channel sci-fi. And then they cancelled it after the second or third season. And then Amazon bought it just because it was one of Jeff Bezos' favorite shows. And that's why uh, he pushed Amazon Studios to buy it. And then they expanded the budget like crazy from that season onwards. And that's why we had the whole series coming up with new seasons up till now on Prime. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it helps to be a billionaire with your own uh, OTT platform and your studio. Right? right? I'm so. Why does he really like stuff like Battlestar Galactica or something like that? Yeah, I, I, I know, I know. <laughs> so many other things. Yeah. Right? 
I mean, I honestly wish that done. I mean, you won't like this body, but I wish that done something new rather than redo, you know, do one more LOTR series. Oh, Akhila will also say yes to that. And so then. Yeah, I, I completely agree with uh, Suresh. Suresh. Vishnu. Nobody yeah. should show Bezos for Firefly. Firefly. That's it. First. Please. Please. Yeah, but then isn't Joss Whedon cancelled? <laughs> yeah. Did he get cancelled? We, we, we want the series. We don't want. Okay. Okay. He will be involved. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Some 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 people have a way of uncancelling themselves. A Firefly comic book series has resumed actually very recently. Oh, resumed, yeah. Uh, the comic book series has resumed now. Oh, and that that I did not know. Thank you, Suresh. That I did not know. TIL. Right. So that this is the uh, MCNR Kittur Chennama, which is one of the one of the ships that appeared during the first season. Yes, first season of Expanse. Right. Next question. So we've seen this poem enough number of times. I have to show off my t-shirt. What is? That's oh, a that's a TARDIS flying over Starry Night. Is that the Picasso TARDIS? Yeah, uh, no, Vincent Van Gogh. Ah, sorry, Van Gogh TARDIS. Oh, yes. nice. Right. So Adarsh gets it right. So do not go gently into that good night. Old rage should burn and rave at the close of day. Rage, rage against the dash, 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 dash. It looks like uh, everybody is getting it. At least three people have got it right that I know of. I don't know how many worked it through the Neil Gaiman clue at the bottom. Right. So that's the penultimate question. Let's who gave it right first. Right. So I let me know when pounce is closed. Yeah. Adarsh, Adarsh can un yeah. yeah. Adarsh, unmute and give us the answer. Yes. Uh it's rage, rage against the dying of the night. Dying of the light. Dying of the light is right. So that's the debut novel by this gentleman called uh, uh, George R. R. Martin. It's now part of the SF Masterworks uh, edition as well. And the thing was, you can look this up. This is from Neil Gaiman's uh, blog, where somebody asked him, why isn't George R. R. Martin writing? Why is he doing other things? And uh, he says, let me be put it as politely as possible and then says, George R.R. R. Martin is not your bitch and then goes to explain why he isn't. So full points to those who said uh, dying of the light. I think Akila also got it right. Uh, yeah, Akila got it right. Yeah. Right. Let's move on to the next question. And the last question. Right. So... According to SF Flow, it was uh, invented by Gardner Dozoi when he noticed something about this book that you see here, The Man Who Melted by Jack Dan. What did he, uh, you know, invent or what did he notice about the book? Just, just look at the cover, more specifically the top half of the cover and you'll have your answer. You can be a little descriptive if you want to. That's, that's fine. Just look at the top half of the cover. Read it as is and you'll get your answer. Right, uh, Sandeep says face of technology. Uh, no, it just says look at the top half of the cover. Right, uh, are we closing pounds? Yeah. Right, anyone wants to take a guess? Someone has not answered so far. Let's go to Nitin. I so love that's the answer the little thing which 
you know people used to buy books these days uh, recommendation on nudge to pick it up no 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 uh, other says facial recognition no like i said look at the top of it says the man who melted jack dan does that give you what <laughs> something to do with the font no nothing to do with the font anyone yeah joy you want to yeah Oh. Uh, yeah, like a fingers missing from both the hands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, nothing. Nothing to do with anatomy. Nothing to do with missing anatomy. Right. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll give the answer. Okay. So basically, Gardner Doza invented something which you can play, and it's a it's a fun game called the Jack Dan game. So basically, he noticed that if you drop the bike. Uh, between the title and the author's name it formed a full grammatically correct sentence so in this case the man who melted jack dan <laughs> right so uh, other entries in the jack dan game are dying inside robert silverberg or two sisters gore vidal that's my favorite that's uh, this thing yeah any other sisters gore vidal uh, correct two sisters gore vidal right imagine dying inside robert silverberg No, I so, don't want to imagine. Thank you. <laughs> don't want to imagine. So that's basically the Jack Dan game. Uh, so you can just look for book titles uh, as long as the title and the uh, author's name uh, form a grammatically correct sentence. It 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 fits. Anyone wants to uh, take a? So there, there's an author called uh, uh, Scott Baker, and his book is called. the darkness that comes before oh the darkness that comes that comes before, before start big <laughs> anyone else okay i mean how many books i am sure there are many i have this book on my table right now open andre agassi <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> good entry open andre agassi open andre agassi <laughs> I don't know. There's this grandmaster called Damon Knight who wrote a book called Turning On. <laughs> okay, then. Thank you. <laughs> Turning On. Thank you very much. Cool. Uh, that's a fun question to end the quiz with. I think, Charay, should we? Yeah. Let's 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 have let's have the scores and uh, can open up chat, public chat, so people can. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, chat is open uh, once again. Just a big, big shout out to Gautam Shanoi, uh, Arushi, and Bertie. Uh, Bertie and Arushi also helped us with the questions and the fun facts as well. Uh, hope all of you had a great time. Uh, this is the first time we're doing a science fiction quiz uh, with Shanoi, sir. Uh, Shanoi has obviously been doing science fiction quizzes for a while, a decade now. Am I mistaken? More than a decade. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling very young now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, but thank you so much for doing this. Uh, you know, Shanoi did this mostly uh, on his own. Uh, the entire set. Hope all of you enjoyed uh, the set. Hope to do this once again. But, We have uh, some recommendations. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ah. Okay. Okay. Since I said I'm going to start, obviously. So uh, the reason the, my recommendation is going to be one thing is this guy called Project Bibliotherapy, who's actually there. Is Nitin the guy who gave us the wrong answer a couple of seconds back and. He run. He's on. You can catch Project Bibliotherapy on Instagram or on Twitter, and they have this amazing zine, which just has fantastic content where you just click on the QR code and you get taken to amazing articles in the depths of the internet and find stuff that you didn't know. So Project Bibliotherapy. So thanks, Nitin, for that. I am enjoying this, and obviously he had a competition on Instagram. I won it. That's how I got this. So look out for more books that way. Yeah. And and everything that you saw in the quiz are all recommended. Uh, but before we move on, uh, thank you, uh, India wants to know and Sai and Aman for inviting me and handholding me through this IWTK process. Thanks, Bertie and Arushi for being such fun co-conspirators. Uh, thank you all for coming and you know on a on a Sunday evening putting aside everything. So I hope you had fun. So please play the Jack Dan game, read all these books, and you know live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. <laughs> But yeah, I get to show off my T-shirt too now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I started this whole thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, ladies first. Ladies first. Can can we take a screenshot with all three of you showing your T-shirts, please? Nice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I, I I don't know what nefarious purposes that is. I know. Oh, so I have a recommendation we also discussed earlier, and that is uh, this this. series called binti it's uh, it's a novella series which we discussed before it's it's written by this african author and it's kind of like what hunger games wishes it was and it's a pretty cool series and uh, Could you repeat the name please binti b i n t i uh, it is i mean we had discussed it before this and it was also it yeah it so, so it is part of it yes. with before but it isn't now Wait, wait. I will just type it out. Yeah, B I N T I. I, I, I. I'm asking Binti. I'm asking you. What? So. Hey, you're like, oh, you're recommending it just so that you can make that pun. Yeah, it's also good. Like I said, it's something that Hunger Games wish it was, wishes it was. Yeah. No, no. It 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 was absolutely brilliant. I mean, and it's just three novellas, and each of them were nominated. One of them won the Hugo, and all of that. It, it's uh, brilliant. Yes, I agree with Rohit. The uh, Machine Hood is really good too. Uh, partly set in, uh, I mean, it starts in Chennai and has Indians as part of the characters in it. Uh, yeah, it's here somewhere. <laughs> so we actually have a few more questions if people are uh, game we could actually continue them uh, over the next 10 minutes uh, shanoi if that's okay i i I'm, i'm cool with it i mean if the people say yes let's have the rest of the questions we can while you do the totaling and all of that it looks like people are game is it is it okay if i take your leave i have sure sure no sure you know so thank you so much guys for thank having you. me <laughs> thanks nice meeting you see ya bye thank you bye 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 yes akila we have mostly a democracy story Right, so I, I think there's about four or five questions more. So we'll just quickly uh, run through it for all for brownie points. So uh, no need to type in chat. So you want to type in chat, type in chat. You want to unmute and just scream out the answer. Go ahead. That's fine, Sai. Right. So the scores uh, freeze to the previous question. Aditya will announce the scores in five minutes. But for now, we just for non-competitive reasons, we just want to continue. Yeah, we'll just go non-comp. You can just unmute and answer. Right. So, created by Antonio Rojo and uh, Jason Michaels. So, this superhero uh, 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 got his powers when he was exposed to an alien power source during his time in South Africa, and he was later used by the Allies to defeat Hitler. So, you can actually see here. You can see Winston Churchill, Eisenhower, Stalin deciding to drop this powerful weapon, and there you see Hitler looking through the screen and seeing this powerful weapon. go kaboom and out comes the superhero so who is this person honestly this looks like mahatma gandhi meets hulk yes okay i will give it to you this is seriously oh my this god is indeed gandhi this is indeed gandhi he thought he could live a life of peace he thought wrong right so it, it is actually uh, gandhi hulk dub bulk dub whatever the case may be So it's 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 a fun comic if you look in the right places you'll find it online right so so basically ahimsa was a sort of cover to keep his anger under check so that you know it's like bruce banerish so anyway next one this term is given to the line that divides the daylight side and the dark night side of a planetary body but when you hear this term you will First think of a 1984 movie which made the name of an 18th century German composer to be forever associated with the movie's lead. You can ignore the bit in the brackets if you want, but since you've seen our level of humor, I'm sure you can guess the answer. Anyone wants is it, to? Is it the Terminator? It is indeed the Terminator. That line is called the Terminator. and who is the composer bach i'll be back correct ah uh, yeah yeah, yeah. So, johann sebastian bach so because i'll not trust like i said i'll be back so that's because he's austrian both of them are austrians wasn't bach german 
ஆஸ்திரேலியா ஜெர்மனி எல்லாம் பக்கத்து பக்கத்துல ஓகே லைக் அகண்ட் அகண்ட் பார்த் அகண்ட் பார் அகண்ட் யூரோப் அகண்ட் யூரோப் ஓகே But actually Putin will want to recruit you. Oh. So, okay. This, when this 1977 film came out and became a blockbuster, this creators of a certain French sci-fi comic realized that there are a lot of similarities and they wrote to the director of the movie. The director of the movie, of course, ghosted them. Uh, so, these guys responded by putting this panel in their comic. It's original in French, but it's translated in English here for people like me who don't know French. Uh, so where the two protagonists of the comic after whom the comic is uh, named uh, meet the heroes from the 1977 film the 1977 film obvious is very obvious so that's not what i want i want the name of the comic which was adapted in 2017 into a space opera film so these are the two protagonists of the french comic french sci-fi comic so basically they come and you know this lady says fancy meeting you here as if they're coming for the first time so this lady says no no you are the guys who are uh, newbies here we've been hanging around here for a long time any guesses uh, is it, is it uh, valerian it is indeed valerian what's the full name of the comic uh, i forgot valerian and a city of thousand times that's okay I'll, i'll i'll give it to you so it's valerian and laureline uh, right uh, that's the that's a comic i mean it's a comic series from the 60s uh that's valerian city of thousand planets uh which was the book and uh here you can see uh a few things that were uh you know similarities that the creators themselves noticed between their comic and uh star wars the two people there in the panel were of course uh, leia and han solo so these are some of the few similarities that they noticed there we go so again trilogy uh, can i can yeah. i can i can i give the clue here yes please ah uh, so so this was a the clue is that the person the author is also known for a very interesting fact that in libraries they have something called the dewey decimal system which is 10 categories into which you can put any book or all books which helps you find a category in or a book in a library so he the person who's been blanked out is the only author who's got it in 9 out of 10 in 9 out of 10 do we decimal classification systems he's got a book in one of them so that's pretty cool so that's the clue to the author uh go for it rajeshree if you get uh, the author you get the uh, book also. so is this uh, asimo uh, mm. i think this is foundation yes it is it is asimo and foundation the clue was in the last lines understanding of mathematics of human behavior to save civilization so this is indeed uh foundation by asimov he was of course referring to the original this thing then after that asimov decided he wanted pocket money and started writing prequels and sequels and what not so foundation by isaac asimov right so sultana's reality is an interactive multimedia project by Afra Shafiq you can play it online it's still live you just type sultana's reality it's a tribute to a 1905 story uh, uh, which is among the first feminist if not the first feminist sf stories in the world uh, and the best part about it is and you know it's a good case in point about how many of us indians don't know our own sci-fi heritage so to speak it was from india written in english in 1905 uh almost 10 years before the usually accepted first feminist sf book uh called uh, uh herland by uh, charlotte gilman came out in 1915 so this is among the very first feminist sf stories uh so what's sultana's reality a tribute to i named the author to the uh, story basically is a dream narrative in which this person finds uh, herself in a country run by women uh, called ladyland it's run very efficiently the men are the ones who are in the zenana or the you know are not allowed to go out and as the story tells us men are useless anyway because they spend their time smoking and having chai wasting time and don't work efficiently like the women do etc 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 anyone wants to go for either the name of the story or the author
Anyone? I think the story is called Sultana's Dream or something. Correct. It is the called dream. Sultana's yeah. Dream, and the author. I don't know, Rukia but I think Sa- the author is Bengali, right? Yes. Yeah. Don't remember though. Correct. I, I, someone said the answer. Roka. Yeah. Rukia. Yeah. Rukia Sa- yeah. Right. So it's Sultana's Dream, Begum, Rokeya Hossein. So I mean, it's available for free to read uh, on the net, but. i would highly recommend getting this edition it's an illustrated version of sultana's dream with art by uh, this uh, amazing tribal artist called durga bai if you can get that it's a, it's a nice short good read right i think this is the last one so here's a verse by mir mohammad taqi mir an 18th century urdu poet he recited which when he first arrived in lucknow i shall not insult urdu by trying to recite it but i put the Translation in English below. There are two blanks where well the dash dash of the age. Filling in the blanks will give you the name of a recent Indian bestseller, which also have made its way into the JCB uh, shortlist, which is which as you know is the richest literary prize in India. So it made it to the shortlist. Uh, six and seven. The blanks are six and seven. Six and seven. A clue would be when you say Indian science fiction fantasy, whose name comes to your mind first? Anyone going for the answer? Chetan Bhagat. Hey. No. Okay. If no one's answering, shall I go to the answer, and then we can have scores? Someone saying something in chat. Yes, Nitin Goel gets it right. It is indeed Samit Basu's Chosen Spirits, uh, which is now being published in the US by Tor as the City Inside. Right. Can we have the scores now, please? Oh, okay. There's one. Wait, I'm just. Uh, so the scores. Oh. In third place, we have a tie between Raja Sri Charan and Devakar Bhaskaran, who gave us fantastic answers. A round of applause for both of them. Well done. Well done. In second place is Sandeep Bharadwaj with seventy points. Wow, that's some score. Well done, Sandeep. And just five points ahead is Mehul with seventy-five points. Ooh. Very close, very close. So Mehul in first place, Sandeep in second, uh, tied for third between Raja and Devakar at fifty-five. After which was Suresh uh, and Suresh uh, Vishnu at forty-five, along with Hari Balaji and Joy at forty-five as well. Akila was at forty, uh, Rohit at thirty, uh, Harman at twenty, along with Nitin Goel, uh, Vivek N D and Ashmita both scored fifteen, uh, Donna ten, and then Darshini and Adarsh uh, are brought at the bottom. But uh, congratulations to the winners and everyone else for some fantastic answers and fun facts. Yeah, and, and lot lots of TILs for me as well, and that that's that that's I that's what I really like about you know quiz and you know that even as a quiz master you go back having learnt a, a lot and this this format just works brilliantly for that, right? Otherwise, you know, I should also get something. No, I'm not going to get points. Might as well get TILs. <laughs> thanks, guys, for all the TILs and thanks for coming in. Right. Thank, you, Thank you so much, Shanai. Once again, thank you, Arushi, Bhagwat Levers, and Bertie, uh, and all the participants as well. Hope to see you the next sci-fi quiz soon.